I'm excited about hearing a word from the Lord today. Oh, come on. How many people are excited about being here and hearing something fresh from the Lord today? And everybody said, amen. We get excited about what we have in Christ. And today we're going to be talking about, I have been just, just pounding through this message this week. And I've been really, really looking forward to seeing what the Lord's going to show us as we go. Because as, as I can tell you this, I work on, as soon as I say amen on Sunday, I'm working on the next message. I'm listening. I'm working on the next message. And guess what? He's working on it till we say amen when we leave here because he's cultivating things in our life and in our heart to share with our brothers and sisters. So if you guys are tuning in, hey, hit like, share it. Let's get this thing around the world. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite books, the book of Ephesians. And it's six chapters of just great blessing and telling us who we are, whose we are, and how to walk that out. So I entitled this something. I thought this might really get your attention. We're rich. So look at somebody say, we're rich. So look at this. As we go through here, I just want to share a few things. That, that The book of Ephesians, as I was reading, I was, I was listening to a guy preach on a couple of things, and, and I always remember this. They say the book of Ephesians is considered the mountaintop of blessings to the theologians. I thought, well, I ain't a theologian, but it's a mountain, mountain full of blessing to me every word we get, you know. And that's the thing. So many times we leave that blessing shut, man. I pray today that you brought your Bibles. If not, we've got a lot of scriptures up here. But never miss out on an opportunity to dig into God's word. So with that being said, I want to I wanna ask you a few things. Just kind of set the stage here. I said, in today's culture, we often think more is better, don't we? Bigger, better, all that stuff. But as we grow wiser and we start to temper that, we go, well, what exactly are we getting more of? You know, bigger is not always better if it comes with a big payment, right? How many people got a car at one time? Don't raise your hand. Got it. And you love that car. About the first month, you liked it the second month. And the third month, you go, we got a long relationship with this car, right? Even with your homes and things like that. But, you know, we keep sticking to this stuff. But what I want to ask you today, here's my question. How would it look? How would your life look different if you were rich? Now, just work with me a little bit here. Because when we say that in that context, we start thinking about money, a bigger house, a new boat, a car, some land. We, we start to get tempted to think about rich in, in, the, in the money and, and stature and things like that, but, but in having power and influence and stuff like that. But what we have in Christ is so much more than anything else. And that's the richness that we want to talk about today. We're rich in the truth of God's word. And here's the thing, man. We're going to cut through the Bible today, and we're going to primarily be in Ephesians, but we're going to pull in some other selected scriptures. So if you got your Bibles today, let's roll through that. It's going to be a great time. We're going to pull back a little bit here, and we're going to look at Ephesians 1, 7 and 8. And it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. I thought I'd surely have an amen there. Let's just read that again. Now, I want you to insert yourself in the story, okay? This is for us. This is for the church. This is for everybody that put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is you. Say, it's me. It's, me. it's all right. It's you. All right. You're rich, right? We're rich in Christ. Here we go. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us. I'm going to tell you what, right there, if you want to just write that down, put it in your Bible, underline it, whatever like that, put it on your refrigerator, your bathroom mirror, whatever it is, read that each morning and realize who you are. But you know how we're rich? We're rich in him. So one of the things I wanted to talk about as we start unfolding, we start using some of these uh, whole 25 cent words. If you're from Buck Road, that's a big word. I don't know about anybody else. Redemption. So what exactly does it mean? I think we need to get a good definition here. Angela would be proud of me today. The action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. We've been redeemed from our sin. We've been bought back out of that. That's freeing. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I see a lot of things on TV and on the, or when you're checking out the little tabloids and stuff. I don't think necessarily being rich in the money business is always better, do you? I ain't never seen so many suicides, split ups, this and that, and don't know what bathroom to use and all these different things. I, I don't understand it, right? But I tell you what, wouldn't it be nice to see a Bible in the, in the checkout stand? Man, I'd pay for something, just put them out there. That's good. But we've got all this other stuff trying to get our attention. All these other things trying to kill, steal, and destroy and knock us off 
of the best thing. But keep on going here. So if, if we've been saved from that and we've been redeemed, how much did it cost? How much did it cost? Anybody ever been on a business deal or something like that? Did, did you, but now, man, you can get this. You know what? You want that new motorcycle? Well, it's got this. It's got this. And you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh. How much? Uh-huh, uh-huh. How much? How much did our redemption cost? It cost God his very best. It cost the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And he willingly gave that for me and you because you know what? He said, you're worth it. Look at somebody say, I'm worth it. And so are you. That's amazing right there. See, a lot of times, I, I have a lot of phone calls from time to time through the week, and, and not so many here, but some, some throughout folks that I grew up with and different things like that, and we all can have this question sometimes. Man, I just don't feel worth it. I just don't feel worthy. Well, God thought you were. So let's go with that. It doesn't matter what anybody else says when God says yes. Say amen to that. It doesn't matter what anybody else says when God says yes. Let's keep on rolling at this. Also, the action of regaining or gaining position or something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I pay something off, I want a victory lap. I mean, I'm like, whoa, it's paid for. It's mine. It's mine. It's paid for. We're doing pretty good, right? We got more room to spend more money, right? We do think about that, don't we? We do think about that sometimes. We get in there and we, start, we say, man, what are we going to do now? But you know what? It's the freedom. And that redemption that Jesus gave us gives us freedom. Now, here, here's something else. Free to do anything you want? Yeah, you can. But why would you want to? You're really freed up so you can live a life that, God, or that glorifies God and honors God and serve God. That's amazing right there. When we get to that place and understand that, it's not to free us up to just go hog wild, as they say, but to turn around and go wide open for Jesus. Anybody else get excited about Jesus? I know you do. I know you do. Hey, I do too. I tell you what, I've always had this uh, real shy personality that I have here, right? <laughs> and, and, and some people that have been really good friends later on, they have told me, you're just a little intense sometimes. Well, let me tell you, this is something to get intense about. Amen. If you can't get excited about being saved, man, I don't know what else to do. You've been rescued. You've been pulled out of sin, set in the family of God. You get, you've got total access to Jesus, to the, to the Father. He says you sin and separate as far as the east is to the west. Hey, he says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Because right there, that's enough to get up and say, whoa, baby. Man. Now, I'm not looking over our problems. I'm not looking over the, the tough times and the rebellious kids and the broken marriages and the, and the bad doctor reports. But I'm going to tell you what. Let's get the ground floor straight, and we can build from there, amen? Let's keep on rolling. Look at this. Because of the richness of God's grace, we gain heaven. Our debt is totally put, paid in full, and here we go. We hear this every week. I know you hear it every week from me. Man, we've been saved. We've been rescued from hell, set in the family of God. But listen to this. I said we hear it week after week, but somehow by Tuesday, we become weak, W-E-A-K. I pray that this message continues to just turn in your heart all week long. So the next time the devil tries to sell you a box of lies, remember you've been redeemed and you are lavished with God's grace. Look at this. Think about that. To be so something in generous or extravagant quantity on. How many people like pancakes? How many people like dry pancakes? I didn't think so. Man, when I go to my buddy's restaurant, he keeps everything out right there. Now, Chris hates it, but I like it because I ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. But I turn around, and I got that old auntie mama, whatever that stuff is, there, and I go, mm, man, I got it on there. And I'm going to tell you, you know the guy before you ate there, he liked it too because if you put your hand down, it sticks to the table. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all ever been to a place like that? I love you, brother. <laughs> I do. But sometimes it just gets good. It just gets all on you, man. But see, think about that. God's grace and his love and his mercy is poured on us like that over and over and over. I know at times that, that I've, I've just drawn really close to the Lord and the Lord has, has been so gracious to reveal himself to me in different ways through, through spending time with him. And you start feeling that 
wave of his love. Have you ever felt that? His, his, his grace pouring over us as we, we're spending time and we go, Lord, I don't know what else to do. Maybe it's in worship. We just said, Lord, I know that you've got it all figured out. You're worthy. Lord, you're the one. And when we turn around and start looking at that, start thinking about what your redemption is, what's happening. I like to say it this way. God shows us grace in God-sized portions. God-sized portions. He biggie sizes it. You know, when y'all go through it, uh, how many people like Chick-fil-A? I'll pray for you if you didn't raise your hand. That's good stuff. My dog likes Chick-fil-A. I mean, Sasha likes Chick-fil-A. We went the other day, and I had a chicken sandwich order and everything else. She was like, that means biggest size the fries. So by the time we got from over here at Kiln Creek home, I called Denise. I said, hey, can you open the door? I got to get the dog in and everything else like that. She said, well, what'd y'all get? I said, well, we had some fries. She said, y'all ate the fries already? I said, we ate the fries time. We got a G.I. Joe's. One for me, one for her. One for me, one for her. One for She's got the air conditioner vent. My dog's ears going like this, man. We're just living large. I love my doggy, man. But you know what? I pour grace on my, my doggy. I try to pour grace on my family. I try to pour grace out on my loved ones and my, my church family. Here's one. I try to pour grace out on those that don't always speak well to, of me. I, don't, I can't imagine anybody doing that. Could you, Miles? I thought I was looking for a little help. <laughs> Everybody don't always think you're the greatest thing. Guess what? God's view of you trumps all that. Amen? So don't worry about what the neighbors said because they ain't gonna probably gonna, gonna agree with you anyway. But you know what? Just keep loving them and keep moving. Show them God-sized portions of grace. Show them God-sized portion of his love. You might be the only Jesus that they see. You might be the only Bible that they see. And if they're looking at your life to see Christ, how well are we magnifying that? Some days pretty good. Some days not so good. But let's get filled up today so today will be good. How about that? We're going to take it a day at a time. We're going to walk in the redemption of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Everybody doing good? Good. Everybody ready for some God-sized portions of grace in their life? Amen. Every day. Well, let's read a little bit more and see what God's got for us. I'm going to walk through this and then we'll kind of break it out. Ephesians, if you've got your Bible, chapter 1, and we're going to go through 18 to 21. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. Is that anybody in here say amen? This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Somebody say, "Woo!" I'm telling you what, that's good stuff right there. People say, man, you get so excited about the word of God. Yes, I do. That's God's love letter to me. That's God's love letter to you. And the enemy wants you to keep that Bible shut. He wants you to keep that Bible shut. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. So I'm going to tell you what. Does anybody believe they're rich today? We're rich in Christ. We are rich in Christ. Let's keep on going. So look at this. As I break that out, I like the way they say it in the NIV. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. Man, sometimes the eyes of a heart gets a little dim. Why? Well, we'll talk about it in a minute because a lot of times we have our Bible closed. But a lot of times the voice of the, 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 the people in the world can get a little loud. Anybody watching any of the news or any of the, the presidential stuff? Good for you. I cut through there. I was like, what in the world? Man, if you was in a time machine and went back 20 years, they'd be going, what are they talking about? But I tell you what, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. We need to line our life up with this. And I say this again, if, if, if you don't realize that, that who you are and whose you are, you'll walk around spiritually bankrupt. And I see it so many times. And I want to tell you this, when you say, you know, the, the title, we're rich, a lot of people tuning in and say, we're rich. We're, we're, this ain't a feel-good message about money, okay? This is a, a, a straight-up, in-your-face message about what God has done for you. I pray that it awakens your spirit to what you've been called to, what it costs God, and what he's called us to do, and how to walk that out. we got to open our eyes of our heart, man. 
Not just here, but open the eyes of our heart. I think about this. God's placed this at a time to this, to awaken the gift in you for the kingdom of God. What gift is God placed in your life? We talk about that often. I, I hear so many times when I talk to people, you know what I hear? What they don't have, what they can't do, all these other things that we deal with at times, instead of what we do have. Let me tell you, when you start realizing what you do have and whose you are and what you have, things start changing in this world, amen? Because then you start realizing, hey, you know what? I know that I need to be plugged into what God says. How many people wear these right here? Yeah, that's right. Sometimes laser surgery and stuff like that. I thought to myself, you know, when I thought about opening the eyes of my heart, Lord, I need to have 20-20 vision in the supernatural, not only in the natural, but in the supernatural in my heart. So I can see what God is cultivating and doing and how he wants to move in my life and your life and lead us into those things. And so as we do that, we need to keep on rolling. Look at this. Do you see your inheritance yet? Now, I know all of us have probably lost somebody along the way. Sometimes you see on TV they got the reading of the will and all that and different things like that. And I know a lot of times in a lot of the murder, murder she wrote stuff, you know, you better not tell nobody what you put in the will because you might, you might be using it real soon, amen? The little murder mysteries and stuff like that. Somebody has to die for the inheritance to be passed on. Well, Jesus died so we can have his inheritance. But the good news is this. Not only did he die, he rose on the third day. And he's sitting at the right-hand side of God. So think about this. It, yeah, it's true that we're going to have heaven, and it's going to be amazing. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. All these things right there, and I don't want to minimize that. But while we're here, God has still equipped us for the mission. You don't believe that? I believe that. You're looking at it right here. Me and Zach were walking through the church today. Went in the back and talking about different things, and we just smiled at each other and said, it's a long way, ain't it? It's been a long way. You know what? This is just the next level. This is just the next thing. And it's not about a building. It's about building the kingdom. But God has chosen to bless us at a time such as this to launch from here, to go into the highways and the byways and the hedges and reach out all around the globe to tell people about Jesus Christ. And charge you up so when you go out this week, you say, hey, man, I'm full of Jesus. I'm ready. Because you know what? Somebody's going to want to throw water on your fire. The enemy wants to just want to turn around and say, hey, you know, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Let me tell you what. As I think about the great inheritance that we have in Christ, it is mind blowing. It's amazing that our sin is separated, that I'm a child of God. Not just me, anybody that calls upon the name of Jesus. Anybody that's turned from the sin and said, Jesus, I need you. I believe that you're the truth, the way to life. I believe you're the one way to heaven. Lord, forgive me of my sin. And today I'm going to come back and just go over that and drive that home. Because, but I, I want to tell you this too. How are you? How are you spending your inheritance? See, a lot of times we think when we talk about church and we talk about Jesus and we talk about all, we think that it's for later on. It is. It's got eternal dividends written all over it. But do you know that God wants to work in your life now? Because think about this. This is just a little buckrow theology. If God was done with you when you say, Lord, come into my life, forgive me of my sin, I'm putting my faith and trust in you, why would he keep you around? Because he's got a job for you. He's got a gift in you. He's got a mission for us as the church. Go into all the world and make disciples. Share the, the message. Pray for lost souls. Man, be a, a, a light in the darkness. So look at this. Are you in tune to the mission? We just talked about it. You know, we just talked about Angela and them that are on a mission trip, praise God. Nick and them are building the, the, looking at maybe building a third church in the Philippines. But you don't have to go out of town to be in tune to the mission. All right? I think that's great, and we support that. But the mission might be across your coffee table. The mission might be at your work, at your school, at your office. The mission might be in the mirror. Believing and trusting in what God says. Lord, open our hearts, open our eyes of our hearts so that we see you clearly. I, and I think about this. I, I, I don't believe that a Christian life should be boring to y'all. 
I, I really don't. I, I think it should just be amazing. And I also don't believe it because I, I don't think we're supposed to be living fearfully worried or overwhelmed. I'll even go a little bit further. I, I, I believe it should be that we are so plugged into what God's going on that a lot of this other stuff in the world just rolls off of us because it's so temporary. I'm not saying it's not real, but it's temporary. Man, think back 10 years. Think about the appliances that you bought or different things like that. Are they worth anything? Think about your car. But time has paid off. If you're lucky, it's worth half. The great thing about being tuned into the mission, what he's given us as an inheritance, not only is it growing, but you can give it away and you still get more. What do you mean? I can give the love of Christ away and he fills me up. I can give grace away and he fills me up. I can give mercy away and he fills me back up. Amen. I can give that forgiveness over and over and over through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he keeps filling us up. That's one gift that you can give away and never get rid of it. It keeps coming back. But you got to keep going back to fill up. That's the deal. We got to keep going back so we can fill up on what he has. Have you ever had a week where you're a little low? Two weeks, a month. I think you'll probably find this. That what happens a lot of times is it's because we start isolating ourselves off from things. You can find that out real fast. I, I, I said this, and this is one thing I learned in ministry straight out. If somebody misses one week, it's easy to miss two. And if you miss two weeks, man, I'll get back with you later. I always know things come up. I ain't coming down on anybody about that. But man, I look forward to going to church. I look forward to Tuesday nights. I look forward to any time I get to share about Jesus. How about you guys? I love that. Hey, and if I can't find anybody, I'll call you on the phone and talk about Jesus. I'll find you in the food line and talk about Jesus. It doesn't matter. It's amazing that, that how we can sit on the sidelines and not tell nobody about the Lord. I use this illustration all the time. How many shoppers we got out there? Anybody like shopping? Yeah. I met a guy yesterday when I was shopping. <laughs> I was shopping on Craigslist and looking around, and, and I bought this little generator. Why'd you buy another generator? Because it was on sale. Because <laughs> it was a good deal. So this guy said, hey, come by and get this little generator. And uh, I said, would you take this for it? He said, yeah, I'll take this for it. I said, where do you live? He told me right now. I said, man, I ain't far from you at all. And so I tell Denise, this is basically where I'm going. If I don't show up in an hour or two, send out the posse. All right? So I go. And I called this guy and he says, where are you at? That's him. That wasn't me. I know he sounded a lot alike. Where are you at? I said, uh, I'm at 28. I know you're at 26. Where's 26? He said, you got to back up and go through the tree line. And you got to go around the curve. And I'm coming. I see you. I see you. I'm like, I don't see anybody. And I go back. And this guy's got some stuff. And I find out that he's an auctioneer. So, of course, you know what I said? I said, sell me something. He said, yeah, I'll give you 10, got 10, got 10, I'll give you 15, got 15, 15, 15, 15. I said, I was just kidding. But he could do it, man. He could do it. And he, and he told me this. And, and Denise and him would have got along good. Because he said this. He says, if I see something on sale, I just got to have it. I just got to have it. He had boats. He had bicycles. He had air compressors. He had all this stuff stored up. He had tons of stuff, and I thought, that's cool. But I also realized a lot of this stuff's rusty. A lot of this stuff's old. A lot of this stuff he's probably not going to use. You see where I'm going with, right? He is all excited about his stuff. I'm not preaching against stuff, but guess what? Hey, what's those things? That, what do they call them, uh, Miles? Con, convex boxes? What con? Connect. Con, that's it, convex boxes. Help me out. He had about four or five of them. So I said, what you got in there? He said, I don't know, but I'm watching the whole time. I don't want him to hit me in the head or something. You know, you don't know where you're going. <laughs> so he said, look at there. I'm looking at, we got our flashlights in there, but this time it's dark. We're looking in there, and I'm thinking, I don't know if I want anything out of there. But he had some stuff that he had put back. He, had, I mean, he, was, he was showing me the treasures that he had come up with, man. The treasures, he had all types of stuff. He had all types. I mean, he had a five-gallon bucket of screwdrivers, every size, every color, everything. And as I rode back away, I said, that's really cool. He reminds me of Kevin, <laughs> our buddy. He saves everything. I thought my dad would really get along good with this guy. 
And then he says, man, I, I was counting. He had like six boats. I don't know if I'd go out. I don't know if they're seaworthy, but he had them. And I'm not picking on stuff, but, but I thought about this. Those things are rusting. Those things are rottening. Those things bring no eternal dividends. I don't want to be the guy that has all my stuff in my backyard stored up. I want to be the guy that hears, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to be the guy that brings everybody he can to Jesus. Y'all hear that? Everybody we can to Jesus. Everybody we can to Jesus. That's the deal. That's why I go like I do. That's why I do what I do. Because, man, I'm telling you what, I got saved. I mean, I got saved. I realized, man, I'm not going to hell. I realized that Jesus loved me. I realized that he did that for me. See, the open, uh, open, my, my eyes got open to the things of God. My heart got open to the things of God. Guess what? That'll make you move in the things of God. That'll put your feet on the path of the things of God. I ain't saying I got it all right. Not saying I don't ever blow it. But I'm going to tell you what, that's my heart. That I want to be in tune to that mission. I want to be in tune to that. But you know what happens? Got to check our blind spots. Oh, you can get some blind spots in life, can't you? You can get some blind spots. All this week, I'm going to be real honest. I studied hard this week. I went through so many books of the Bible, man, I thought I wrote some of them. I was just going back and forth. And when I couldn't sleep no more, and when I was tired out about 3 a.m., we had the old same conversation me and the Lord have from time to time. Just ask me. It wasn't that I wasn't praying. It wasn't that I wasn't thinking about the Lord. But sometimes we get caught up in the doing instead of the being. And he just wanted me to be. Wasn't nothing wrong with studying. Wasn't nothing wrong with going through the Bible and things like that. I love that. Matter of fact, I wish I had more time sometime. But I have to watch in my life the fine thread of just trying to gather details and missing out on the relationship. That's going to help somebody. I'm being very clear about that. Not proud of it, just telling you. But that's what the Lord showed me because I'm digging and I'm doing this and I'm working on something. I'm writing notes down. I got stuff in my phone. And, man, it's Wednesday and I don't have what I'm going to preach on, Lord. And what is it, Lord? And everything else. And I'm thinking, why are you getting all bent out of shape? He never let you down. You're going to have exactly what you want. And then he reminds me, boy, you're rich. You're rich. Don't be sweating it. You're rich. Don't be worrying about it. Don't worry about the time. I got plenty. Don't worry about the message. I got a whole lifetime of it. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. How did that happen? How did that happen? You know? And I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying it wasn't the best. But man, when I got my mouth shut and my eyes open, the eyes of my heart open, God started pouring this in and start reminding me. You remember when you used to say, I'm just going to tell you a little conversation in my heart. Man. Remember when you used to spend so much time in Ephesians? Remember when your arm got tore up and you was in that hospital? And I showed you this. And I showed you that. I'll share that with you real quick. Some of you all heard it. Got different faces in there. Years ago, 2001, I was at Walmart. My arm got tore back like this. It ripped my bicep off my arm, rolled all the way up to here. Let me tell you, if you're a guitar player, that is not something that you want. Because they don't even know if you're going to be able to play again. Went through all that. And we were praying about it, and I, and I had to have surgery like immediately, like the next couple of days. And we went, and uh, we were Mary Immaculate, and I was sitting in there, and we looked at the newspaper and stuff, and I put that down. And I said, give me my Bible. I love the book of Ephesians. Like I said, because it tells us who we are, whose we are, and how to walk it out. And I began to read what I'm telling you now. And in the middle of that, I felt like the biggest teardrop hit my head. Boom. Boom. Three times. Today, as I'm saying it right here, this is what the Lord said to me. That was the love that I was lavishing on you. That was the healing that I was going to bring forth through those people at the doctor. And I started to cry. And I started to cry. And Denise was like, it's okay. I said, I know. I said, they can't even mess this thing up, babe. 
She's like, what? I said, God has just wrapped me in his arms during this thing. I knew it was going to be okay. Does that mean I didn't have a little pain? Yeah. Does that mean that it was a little uncomfortable? Absolutely. But I'm going to tell you what. They had a guy, the chaplain in that hospital come in. And he came by. Never forget him. He came by. He said, he said uh, uh, what are you having done today? And I told him, I said, well, I'm having this done. They got to connect this and everything else. He said, well, you seem like you're doing all right. I said, oh, I'm doing good. Matter of fact, how about I pray for you? I start praying for the guy. He said, man, ain't nobody ever prayed for me. I'm going around praying. I said, brother, you need to be prayed for. You out here, you got to fill up. I want to help you out, man. And I start telling him about the music ministry and everything else. He said, you got any tapes? You got any CDs? Yes, I do. Guess what? Then he went back to the car, brought a whole boatload in. He passing them out so people can get saved and get encouraged in the Lord all because God. Amen. All because God is who he says he is. Give the Lord a hand clap. Man. Got to watch those blind spots. I'll tell you what. The world will produce blind spots in us. Big ones. And they're subtle. They're just easing into it. Had a friend of mine got a car the other day. This probably get me in trouble, but I thought it was funny. I got to share it with him. Friend of mine got a car the other day. He said, man, it's got everything in there. He says, man, it, the wipers come on. And this it sense if it's raining and do all this. He said, matter of fact, if you go to change lanes... He said, it'll even tell you if a car's over there. I said, ain't nothing. I had that for 25 years. My wife tells me every time, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Pray for the pastor. But uh, anyway, they said, you ain't going to tell her that. I said, I'll probably tell everybody. But anyway, they said, that's pretty good. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? I call it the swoop. If you can't get over, right, just lean over a little bit and they're back up. Yeah. Yeah. When I used to I had that trailer. My buddy said, we got to get over. We got to get over. He said, swoop them. I go like this. And that thing goes, yeah, people go, oh, we got it. Go on here. <laughs> Sometimes in life, you got to swoop them with the gospel. Just tell them about the gospel one time. Just tell them about the gospel one time. Right? Man, oh, man. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Come on, somebody. Well, you know what? We're going to bring it on in with this. How do we walk in power? Let's go back to verse 19. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. Do you believe him today? Do you believe in him? Look at this. Now, I also thought about this. I said, if Paul is praying for us to understand the incredible greatness, it, it reasons that we can misunderstand the power of greatness. And I think what happens is we sometimes misunderstand that. How many people, be honest, thought or think that God's mad at them? I thought, oh, I thought that. I, as a young man, thought God was big, way up in the clouds, waiting for me to mess up. Where did I get that from? I didn't get it from the Bible. But guess what? We didn't have the Bible open, right? We had a reverence, and we need a reverence for that. And I think we need a healthy fear of certain things. My fear wasn't healthy. My fear was scared, as they say. I was scared. But you know what? When I started understanding the love of Christ, I don't want to run from him. I want to run to him. How about you? He's got open arms on the cross, open arms. He poured out his blood so it could make a way for us. That's that redemption. I've been redeemed. We've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. He's the lamb of God, they say, right? Spotless. He gave it all for us. But look at this. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. If we've got God's power in us, we ought to be able to change things in the world. Amen? We ought to be able to set the stage in your home about what's going to happen. We ought to be able to, to be difference makers in this world and at our work and everything. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost headlock. I'm not talking about beating with people with the Bible. I'm talking about living a life that is so contagious they go, I want what you got. Let me tell you, when I was in that hospital, that guy wanted what I had. And I'm not saying he didn't have it, but I'm going to tell you what. I think because of just day in, day out, Day in, day out, our hearts get darkened. So, Lord, I pray today that you pull back the veil of our hearts, eyes, that we see you clearly. And we realize the power of what you've done and, and, and what you gave us. I'll go back to this again. 
The open Bible. Is your Bible open? Man. I got Bibles all over the house. That doesn't make me a Christian. But I want to be where I can reach that anytime. Now, you got an app on your phone. You got it on your iPad and all that stuff. That's great. But how, how often are you looking at that? Are you, are you opening that up? Are you challenging yourself? Because every message that I, that, I, that I bring forth, I believe it should encourage. I believe it should challenge. I believe it should bring us to a point of decision of what God wants us to do and how God wants to do it. And we need to line it up with his life. Amen. That doesn't mean it's comfortable. That doesn't mean it's comfortable. A lot of times, oh, man, I got to tell you this again. Some of y'all weren't here. I did a funeral two, three weeks ago, and the lady said, well, I appreciate your message and stuff. But she said, I really don't go to church much because I, I, sometimes I just feel beat up. Well, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to lift you up. But I'm going to tell you the truth. And if your life ain't aligning with the truth, you might get beat up. Guess what? I get beat up sometimes. Just like I said, I'm thinking I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging, right? And, and what's happening is I dug so deep, I wasn't even listening. Lord, I get back with you. I'm reading this right now. Lord, I, I, I know you. I, I got it. So guess what he did? <laughs> Dig on, big boy. Keep on shoveling. Until it got over my head, I'm like, this is weird. What's going on here? I know I'm seeking after the Lord. Was I? I was seeking after the information. And what the Lord showed me, if you seek after me, I'll give you the information. See, I got the, that quick. The Lord said, let me help you with this. You flip the, you, you flip the whole thing over. You, you, you had the opportunity to sit at my feet. But you were too busy ruffling, rustling through it stuff. I wanted facts and details and facts and details and facts and details. How many know this? If I hang out with Kevin right here and I spend time with Kevin and we go to lunch and we do different things and we just fellowship, I'm going to know probably what his favorite football team is, how he met Melissa, what's going on in his life, what's his favorite color, everything else. I don't have to study up on Kevin. I can spend time with Kevin. I can build in that relationship with Kevin, and I'll get it all. Please don't misunderstand me. Studying's great. I'm just saying your pastor got it upside down for a couple of days this week. But boy, I come running back. Lord, I missed you. I missed you. Not only did I miss him, I missed him. Because I was trying to get all the answers. And the truth is, I had all the answers. It's him. This whole thing here. Probably in the first eight or ten verses of, of Ephesians, you can look through there and you'll see references to him or in him like ten times in eight verses. It's amazing. That's what we got. If we're going to walk in him, we've got to understand the power that we have in him. It's amazing. God will give you Revelation, God will give you peace, amen, in the midst of the storm. I've seen people walk through different things, and you say, how in the world are they? It's not that they're not hurting. It's not that they don't believe the situation. It's that they believe that their God is bigger than any situation. They believe God's got it. That's what we believe. We believe God's got it. But sometimes we like to try to get it wrong, don't we? We like to do it our way. So keep your Bible open. Look at this. Come on down a little bit as we unfold the scripture. It says, this is the same mighty power, verse 20 says, that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. The same power is available to us that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. Anybody feeling weak? Grab hold of that. See, a lot of times we, we look at things and we go, man, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Guess what? You're probably not going to do it. But with God, all things are possible, right? We got to keep on pressing. We got to keep on looking. We got to keep on going, keep on seeking. I wrote a few things down. I was just brainstorming and writing some stuff down. So I'm going to hit you guys with this. If there's anything you want to write down, feel free to do it. 
I said, the Lord set the stars in heaven. Look to him to give light to your dreams. He set the stars in heaven. You don't think he can take care of your situation? You don't think he hears your prayers? You don't think he can work with you? Man, look at all the people that he worked with. Look at the guy that wrote this that God used through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul, who was Saul, was, was waiting for the order to let me go get those Christians. I'll pull them out. We'll have them killed. We'll have them beaten. Everything. This guy got changed radically because you know what? That's what Jesus does. He changes our heart. He changes our address. He changes our makeup. I talked to a lot of people about this, and you guys probably heard it. What gift do you bring to your generation? What gift has God placed in you for a time such as this? You might be surprised. You say, well, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a preacher. I'm not, well, that's okay. God has placed something in you for a time such as this to be a difference maker, man. And I said, man, let our life be pleasing to the Lord each day, but we got to do it one choice at a time. One choice at a time. I know how to lose weight. I don't always choose to do that. You know how you lose weight? I'm going to help you with that. I'm going to help me with that. One choice at a time. You get the baked chicken instead of fried chicken. You get the salad instead of the lasagna. Well, see, in my idea, salad is just telling you real food's coming. <laughs> the guy said, oh, we got a great salad. I was like, that's great. What else you got? That's the signal. My stomach's going, guess what? They got some real food coming in a minute. This is just, they just cooking it. They just don't want you to gnaw on anything, you know? That's, that's what we look at, man. But you know what? We got to continue to do this. Something else the Lord was showing me this week. If you want to build your faith, you got to give what you believe a good workout. If you want to build your faith, you got to give what you believe a good workout. Sometimes you got to extend mercy. Sometimes you got to extend kindness. Sometimes you got to extend forgiveness. We just got to trust God. And as we trust God in the small things, He starts to reveal Himself in the big things. I was writing some notes down the other day, and I, I wrote this. I said, if you want to do big things for God, be faithful in the small ones. Everybody want to take off, man? Woo, I want to help. I want to go. I want to get this over. Oh, man, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to help you with this. I want to do this. I want to get all this stuff done in about two weeks. Hey, tired out. I don't think I can do it anymore. Man, take the steps and be faithful in those things as you go, in the small things. This is my favorite one. I shared this many times. I see my buddies a lot of times. A lot of my friends say, man, I'm going to go to that church one day. I saw a guy the other day at the car show. I sold him a car a long time ago. He said, man, how you doing? I said, doing good. He said, man, I fixed that car up and everything else. I was like, I thought it was fixed up when we sold it to you. But anyway, it wasn't fast enough. It wasn't shiny enough or whatever, but that's okay. He says, you know what? I'm going to come to that church someday. Now, inside, out being in 102 degrees heat, this is what I thought. You told me that two years ago. But I didn't say that. I said, doors open any time, right? And then I thought about sometimes I see some friends and they say, man, I just want to tell you. They get, they get real humble. I love it. Man, I'm going to tell you what. If, we, if, if, if I hit on this scratch ticket, if I get this scratch ticket right here, oh, they get all down. Let me get over here so y'all can see. If I get that ticket, if I just get that ticket right there, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to buy you a big church. And I go, we ain't even filled up the one we got now. So why don't you just come now and we'll just go with that. But have you heard? Oh, man, I'm telling you, man, we get that. We're going to go into, oh, man, we don't need more stuff. <laughs> we don't need more stuff. Still got a couple seats. Ouch. Come on in. <laughs> I know it's a little rough on the floor, but help me out. <laughs> we keep it real, don't we? Y'all might have to help me on that last song. <laughs> We might just have to play, this is the day. Oh, my goodness, man. We got to walk in the power of what God's done for us. You know, when God calls us, do we give him the busy signal? You know what? You ever had that? Man, give me a call anytime, and then you can't get up with folks. It never happens with God. If we want to finish strong for God, we got to trust him daily. We got to trust him daily. Man. How's your faith growing? I said, I did a devotion the other day, and I said this. Now, we, we're at the end of six months here, January to June, okay? 
How much have you grown in the Lord in six months? Check yourself. It's good to have those spiritual little checkups, right? You know the Bible study you say you were going to come to the last six months? It's still going on. You know, that's good. Cool. I'm not jamming up anybody. I'm just, just trying to help you a little bit. If you think that's that little nudge in your, in, in your spirit there, I'll help it along. What, what is it? You know, I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to set out and do this one day. I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to lose 20 pounds one day. I've done that many times. Lose it, put it on. Lose it, put it on. Lose it, put it on. Got a good rhyme to it, don't it? <laughs> Makes me hungry. <laughs> Woo! I got to tell you, man. Denise, Denise, I'll I tell you what. I, I, one thing I have found out. If you want to uh, get a new wardrobe, just keep eating. Because every shirt I got looks like a halter top right now. I, uh, I got to do something, man. I'm just being honest. I got to do something. But I like eating, and I like going out with my friends and eating. And then if they don't eat all theirs, I eat that too. But you know what? You talk about that. How much are we filling up on the things of God? See, we'll pack our plate full with, with the food. But do we pack our hearts full with the word? Y'all thought I was getting sidetracked, didn't you? Do you pack your, 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 your life with the promises of God? Do you, do you speak the word of God? Do you continue to move forward in those things? Something else. I said being a Christian doesn't mean it's easy. It just means it's worth it. Jesus did it all. Is it easy being a Christian? Some days, some not, whatever. I'll give you a perfect example. If you're the only Christian at your workplace, it might not be easy. But it's worth it. You might be the only Christian in your family. It might not be easy, but it's worth it. You might be the only Bible somebody sees. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Can you imagine? I don't know exactly how it's going to be when we get to heaven, but it's going to be awesome. Can you imagine praising the Lord and somebody come up and tap you on the back and say, hey, because you, you sent a Bible track out uh, with your bills one day, I got saved. Because you shared a CD, I got saved. Because you hit the share button on Facebook, I got saved. A lot of times, we just might be one piece of the puzzle. But God knows where they all fit. Think about that. The piece of the puzzle that we got in life, there's all types of pieces in it. And we try to bend them and we try to cut them and we try to do all these type of things. But the truth of the matter is, if we put them in the master's hand, he can put them together in the master plan. And that's the thing I think we need to do so often. We want to fix it. I don't know if y'all saw my, my video this week with my up and coming uh, granddaughter going to be taking over the band here soon, another 10 years. <laughs> so I get my little granddaughter, Addie. She's out there. I was sitting down on the floor, I'm playing guitar, and she's got some bongos. So we start playing. I say, all right, we're going to do Johnny Be Good. Matter of fact, we'll do Addie Be Good. And she starts banging. And, and I get going a little bit, and she goes. I play a little bit more. She keeps grabbing the guitar. Now, I told Thomas, I said, I know she wants to play guitar. She don't play them drums. <laughs> Guess what she's getting for Christmas? <laughs> but I thought about that. I was trying to show her a few things, and we go, no, I got it. No, I got it. We do that to God. I did it this week. I got it. He said, okay, you got it. Yeah. And I, and, and I start working things in my own strength instead of his. Anybody ever done that? You start doing things in your own strength, and a lot of times you don't re realize it until you don't have any strength no more. And then you're all in the dying cockroach position, as my buddy says. And you go, Lord, help me. I'm going to tell you what. God's more than enough. I wanna, I'm going to share this and we'll move on to the last thing. Don't yet let yesterday's mistakes ruin the future that God's got for you today. So many times we want to plow backwards. I got a buddy of mine, been through a lot of stuff. And I just say, because I know he, he probably, he already told me. He's been through different things, been in jail, everything else. He said, I can't stand what's going on in the neighborhood. That's it. I'm running for mayor. I said, you're going to run for mayor? He said, yeah, as soon as I get off parole, I'm going for mayor. I said, good. He said, my life's been changed, man. 
And this place needs some changes. I said, go, baby, go. What, can, what do you need? Because this is what happens is, everybody wants to tie you to your past, but God will free you for your future. God will let you loose so you can be who you was called to be. Man, over and over and over, look at this. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. See, my buddy got that. I'm not the guy I used to be. I don't do the things I used to be. I don't care about the things I used to be. This is what matters. Wow. But you know what? That's how we walk in the power. That's how we walk in the power of what God's done for us. So you know what? I'll bring it home with this. Do you realize just how rich you are? Man. Years ago, we started doing a little something different. We've never passed the plate here. I think it's biblical. We could do that and everything else. But I didn't want that to be an issue. I wanted, you know what? We give. We put back in, into the kingdom of God. It takes it to do what we do. I appreciate all y'all do. I ask you to pray about it and give accordingly to what God has called you to do. That's part of worship. That's part of the deal. That is biblical. Amen. Amen. And the reason I bring that up is I wanted to show y'all something. How God will bless even the small things. Remember we said we're faithful in the small things. Years ago, we started this. Any loose change you got, just put it in that. We used to have a little monkey. You remember that monkey we used to have? Put it in the monkey. I don't know what happened. I think Tiny snapped the head off it, and we had to get something different. I don't know. But we got, he, he, oh, she broke the pig. We moved to a monkey. Now we got a squared glass jar. And God's still working through all that. So we turned around. And the reason I said that, I said, you know what? Little is much in the hands of God. And as we've been faithful, even in the small things, God's been blessing in the big things. That was a perfect object lesson to see how God will move in those things. We've been able to feed people with that. That's over and above. That's just a little an object lesson and an opportunity to show you how little is much in the hand of God. Feed people. Buy prescriptions for stuff. Get Bibles for folks. Help with different things like that. Mission trips. All that. What would happen if we really got sold out and said, Lord, you tell me what you want in my life and that's what I'm going to do? Whether it's serving, whether it's giving, whether it's doing, whether it's praying, whatever it is. I pray that we realize that we're rich, but we invest those riches back in the kingdom of God. Your gift, your ability, your prayers, your forgiveness, your love, your mercy. How many people have been inviting people to church? Guess what? I want to encourage you to do that every week. Encourage them to come to church. You know what? But not only that. Just encourage them. Because like I said, you might be the only person that they even hear from about the redemption of the blood of Christ, about the forgiveness of his sins. In accord with all the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us, I pray that God uses us this week in a way with so much of his love and so much of his mercy lavished on us that people go, what in the world? I need what they have. I want what they have. I want Jesus. Let me tell you, friends, that's the deal. That's the message. It's not that we're rich in the things of this world. We're far more richer with things that this world can never buy. Peace, love, patience, compassion, all those things, man. All those things. But if you just keep them, in that Connex box like that guy had, they're going to rust, they're going to smell, and they're going to just rot away. I'm not willing to do that, are you? I'm not willing to take the gift that God's given me, and sometimes I'm still figuring out what that is. Some days it might be a little different, but I'm not willing to leave my gift on the sidelines of life and not bless somebody else with it. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to tell you how good God is. How about you? I'm going to tell you what God's done in my life if you, if you give me an opportunity. And I want to tell you what God will do in yours. Anything and everything you'll let him. He is more than enough. And he loves you. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you that we are rich. And I thank you, Lord, for Jesus that paid the total price for us. 
And if you're listening today and have never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, I ask you to listen close to me today. It's about God coming as a man and paying our sin debt in full. And the Bible says, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. That means we've all missed the mark. Why do we sin? Because we're sinners. We were born into it. And there was only one remedy. Jesus came to pay that sin debt in full. He came so that we can have life. He laid his life down so that we could have eternal life. He poured out his blood for the redemption of our sin. We talked about it earlier. What is redemption? We've been bought out of slavery to sin. We've been set in the family of God. He's more than enough. Friends, if you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that today is that day. You say, what must I do? The Bible says, hey, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Saved from what? Hell, condemnation. We've been set in the family. But as great as that is, God starts working our inheritance now. That our gifts that he's placed in us can be used to encourage others to have the same free gift as you, eternal life through Christ. He says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Friends, I pray that's you today. Share the message. Be the message. And live the message. And I thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. All righty.